and now recognize the gentleman from Florida, Mr. Bill Arrakis, five minutes for questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for holding this very important hearing. Thank you. Uh, I thank the panel for their testimony as well. Uh, Dr. Kaplan, uh, or excuse me, Mr. Kaplan, I was reviewing your report about how Medicare Advantage provides better outcomes and uh, greater savings uh, than traditional Medicare. Why does capitated uh, MA produce such dramatically better results? I, th I think there are probably two or maybe three things to take away that I think drive that. So one is the alignment of incentives. So in a capitated world, I think we all understand that, that the incentives are aligned between those who pay for the health care and those who provide the health care. So with that alignment, things tend to, to be more productive in how they perform. But the second point is that because of that alignment, what happens is, is that there is a huge investment in preventive care. So when they have the same goals and they're working towards the same, they're going to try to avoid these acute interventions to, to fix something that's gone dramatically wrong. So they, they work with the member or the patient to try and manage them through it. And, uh, and the third point I, I really want to emphasize, which is what Dr. Margulies said, which was the issue around many of these members are become very sick with time, age, as well as, as, well as where they are you know, socioeconomically. And when they are of the, of the, the sickest portion, the 5% that drives the 52% of the cost, that requires even greater intervention and greater coordination. And so when, you, when these ideas of coordinating care and aligning incentives are very important at all aspects of health care, it's extremely important towards the more chronically sick m individuals. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Holtz Egan, uh, in the last uh, Congress, about 40% of the seniors in my district had uh, Medicare Advantage plans. So, uh, you know, they love their plans, and, uh, and it's very popular in my area. They, of course, again, they like their plans. Back in 2010, CMS's chief actuary did a report on the impact of, on Obamacare to Medicare Advantage. He wrote, and I quote, we estimate that in 2017, I know you touched on this, but elaborate, please. We, we estimate uh, that in 2017, when the MA provisions will be fully phased in enrollment and uh, Medicare Advantage plans will be lower by about 50 percent. Does this track with your own analysis of these cuts? Uh, absolutely. As you've heard today, Medicare Advantage is a, is a high quality program. It's very popular. In your district, it's even more popular than nationwide. The senior population is rising, 10,000 new beneficiaries every day. One would expect that if nothing else changed, you'd see more enrollment, a lot more enrollment we're going to see less. What's changed is the financial foundation. The cuts under MA are going to make it impossible for plans to survive, and those that survive will have to change their networks and their benefits and their cost sharing in ways that seniors will, will find undesirable. The net result is going to be less availability of Medicare Advantage. Thank you. Uh, next question for you, sir. Uh, some Democrats have been pushing the accountable care organizations, ACOs, as a model for better care coordination and better cost savings. Doesn't uh, Medicare Advantage promote the same concept with a proven track record of better outcomes and cost containment? Uh, MA has a track record, and it's a, and it's a, a by and large high-quality track record. As I said earlier, not every MA plan is, is created equal, but it has a track record. ACOs are a concept at this point and unproven, and there's one big difference. Um, seniors choose their MA plan. Seniors are assigned to their ACO, and they have no choice. And that's a significant difference in the, the two concepts. Thank you very much. I yield back, Mr. Chairman. 